Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update from RRG Research for Monday the 15th of May. I'm recording this on Friday the 12th of May in the morning. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London on behalf of RRG Research. Today we're going to start by looking at the uh, global stock indices. Um, there's a pattern in there, there's a little bit of a new development which we will explore. We'll go into the where the concentrated action is, the two particular stocks which are leading uh, things a bit. Then going to also this week look at the foreign exchange market and some developments in there to be aware of. We're starting with, as usual, the weekly relative rotation graph of world indices and this is benchmarked against the other indices and we're using as an actual benchmark the MSCI world index. So how are indices doing versus the, the whole indices group? No real change here. We've got the NASDAQ on its own furthest to the right and still heading so with improving RS ratio. We've got in here the DAX, the stocks and the CACs so of the European indices on the right, so outperforming basically the other indices, but easing back a bit, having a bit of a struggle there. The UK, the UK index is, is in the weak side of it now, on the left hand side of the vertical here and heading west, so not looking so good after having had a good run, it's turned around. And the Russell 2000. Zooming away here, so the most broad US index is separating itself from uh, the rest of the US indices. So that's not a good thing, is it, uh, to have the breadth, the wide, the 2000 stock index uh, performing so poorly and very narrowly based um, strength in the US market. We'll see it in the S&P, we'll see it's in the technology area of the S&P and it's really only still a couple of shares in the whole of the technology, the FANG Plus sector. It's not a healthy situation but it's the reality and it's still going on. So if you want to outperform the US stock market which is performing pretty well then you have to do it using only a couple of stocks and because the focus of the outperformance is only in those couple of stocks. Overall, you've, uh, you've got good performance relatively uh, from the European stocks, but they are struggling uh, a bit now. Again, this is very interesting. This is a weekly chart relative rotation graph of uh, the major indices versus not the MSCI world this time, but versus cash. So things that on the right hand side of the vertical here are in a relative uptrend versus cash and things on the left are in a downtrend. So here we've got the um, NASDAQ, uh, sorry, the, um, the Dow and the Russell 2000 here. We've got the Nikkei over here and then we've got bunching together, highly correlated with each other, the European indices on the right with the UK 100 as well, but much further to the right, so much better. And the UK is coming around quite rapidly towards the lagging quadrant. But out here on its own, in the top right, is the NASDAQ. So technology, not the US, Europe if anything, but technology in particular is the theme. Here's the S&P 500. We identified the problem area, the 42,000, uh, 4,200 uh, level for it. Um, it's uh, struggling with it. It's been rebuffed by it. It's still having a problem. We've got a lower high on the RSI here. The MACD is still positive overall. And so that is telling us that the momentum, long-term momentum is still good in this market. However, it's struggling at this moment. If it breaks the 42 level, then the next level is 4,300 for it but at the moment it's struggling. We want to see it hold the support at 4,045, otherwise it's turning down. But at the moment, the dominant pattern is the higher lows, the MAC, weekly MACD being positive struggle that we're seeing now, and we saw that in the ROG chart. But at the moment, the longer term trend is up and it should eventually resolve itself to the upside, but alarming would be a move down through 4040. 
This is the Russell 2000, which is zooming off in a southwesterly direction. And this is a completely different chart, isn't it? We've got lower highs in place here. We have got some support down here at 1,640, but it's pressured. I'm looking particularly at the MACD here. Look at this, it's going down. The MACD, the momentum is on the downside here, and the RSI is also weak. So this is a chart which is showing us what we can see on the RRG chart. It's the worst of the major indices, and it doesn't look good at all. Now the US uh, sector's relative rotation graph no change really here. We've got, except maybe the current, the, the existing situation has, has exacerbated. We only have the, the communication sector and the technology sector over here on the right hand side. They're pointing generally still in the right direction, so gaining strength. The best looking of the rest of them is the consumer discretionary, but it's very close to the middle here. So moving with the, uh, the S&P itself and still the worst is the financials and the financials. If you break down the industry sector, the weakest part of the industry sector is the is what they, they call regional banks. But the regional banks are these things like SVB, for example, was called a regional bank, although it was a sort of rather special uh, bank. But the smaller banks, a lot of them are technical based and the story there those ones are still under a lot of pressure and it's really creeping through to some of the weaker looking big banks as well Bank of America uh, for example the chart has turned quite ugly uh, as well but we're concentrating on this area up here which is the technology sector so let's next look at uh, the FANG Meta and Nvidia right over on the right hand side here it's, it's uh, quite outstanding that you've got these two so separate and remaining separate uh, the way they are. So we're in the right area. We've been since January was when we first picked up on uh, NVIDIA. It's really uh, soared fantastically. It's got to be said that the, the others in the, the FANG group have started to improve as well. Twitter particularly. So there's new potential in these markets. Twitter. Google, Amazon would be the three that I would look most, most closely if you are looking to add into this sector or have taken profits or, uh, or have got a position in it. Tesla turning down, not in the right direction at all, so avoid that. Alibaba also. But there are opportunities here. And I did see, we were looking at the Russell 2000 zooming off from the southwest in the relative rotation graph, that the market cap of Apple is now greater than the market cap of all the stocks in the Russell 2000. Isn't that incredible? Amazing, actually. And many stock exchanges, like including the London Stock Exchange, Apple is bigger than the whole of the stock index. <laughs> Incredible. Now, before I move to NVIDIA and uh, Meta, let me just talk to you about the Nikkei. Now, this was one of the indexes that were coming up rather nicely in the RRG chart. And the chart itself is breaking up strongly. So we've uh, had support at 26,000, ranging for a while up to 29,000, currently breaking up and uh, looking heading for the September 2021 high. The RSI pointing up strongly in here. And then the MACD, this is a weekly MACD, positive and the gap widening, gaining strength as it makes a breakout here. Looks as though it's got much more uh, in it. And I would look now for a retest of uh, these two tops in here, which are at 30,000. It's above, a little bit above 30,000, 30,500 or so. But it's a bit higher, to be precise. 30,000. Uh, 700. It looks very much intent. It's got a look on its face like it uh, really wants to go up and give that a look. So we'll have to see how it behaves if it gets up to that level. Now going back to our theme of these uh, strong uh, technology stocks, um, we, we, we first drew your attention to it back in here, not in here, but back in here. And um, we've had a good run on this, 15 to 200, the gap widening there. We had a little bit of a stall, broke out, now testing uh, the high of uh, April, uh, last uh, April uh, 2022. If we can clear through that, and, um, given uh, this, the momentum, the weekly momentum that we've got there, 
and the RSI too pretty good. I would be slightly worried about a small divergence in here. It's due for a correction. This would be a logical place, 290 be a logical place for it to happen. But I think the momentum's good and that ultimately it will work higher. It has had, had a tremendous run, so it's possible but that it comes back. If it does, it could be well supported around the 275 area, actually quite close. But um, we'll see how this develops. Be prepared for that a little bit. Uh, but um, uh, if it breaks out, it, uh, then, I've, then it could stride forward into that uh, high around the 340 uh, area. So it's, it's in the background, it remains uh, strong, looking good, it's extended, slight loss of momentum, out of resistance. So be cautious, but uh, there's nothing negative about it yet. Now Meta 2, still very strong. These two outstanding leaders here, look at those moving averages, the 50 and the 200 gap widening there, long-term momentum increasing. We see that also on the MACD, the weekly MACD, very strong. Now we have come up to the resistance that we identified at uh, 240 from this high here in April 2022 and um, we're pausing a little bit on that. We saw it on the ROG chart, both of uh, Meta and, and NVIDIA, which uh, sort of turned a little bit south, although they were far over to the easterly uh, side. So it's having a little bit of resistance. The RSI is stalling a little bit at this high level too. It's extended. It may come back. If it does come back, watch for support at 220. Only a little bit of support, but the, the trend I think is so strongly up here that even a little bit of support would hold it. But if we can clear it, look what's above. 240, between 240 and 305, there's nothing. There's a deep blue sky there. So this means there's very little resistance and you know what that, that can mean sometimes when we had no support in it, how fast we moved. So we might be in for a fast move up if it clears that level. So watch out is a very important level in Meta right now. Now moving to the currency markets. Here is the relative rotation graph, daily sampling, US dollar in the middle here. The British pound, which has been doing well, has turned around pretty sharply, pretty sharply. It's still over to the right, still uh, doing well um, in the relative uptrend, but it's weakened substantially. Likewise, the euro is in the uh, weakening quadrant and um, it's heading um, southwesterly and it looks as though it's going to head into the lagging quadrant. So it looks pretty vulnerable. Pound, maybe not so much. So let's have a look at those in a bit more detail. So here is the euro, and the euro has turned over. We saw the uh, loss of momentum in it previously, having a struggle at the, the highs of the beginning of the year, uh, struggling away there, turning down here now. The MACD already uh, crossed. We already got that weak signal, that toppy uh, signal, and the RSI dribbling away here on this weekly chart. It's stalled. Um, it's now beginning to take up a, uh, a downtrend in pattern. It looks as though it's heading uh, into the lagging quadrant. So the run-up is uh, clearly over, more than over. We saw that up in here, but now it's taking a turn in the other direction. Now the pound, once again, in this case it's the daily chart, but the daily chart, we had drawn this trend line in here at, at 127 area here, actually to be precise, 126.64, and Blow me, that June high uh, was where we got to and, um, and we've reversed very sharply from there. We're coming back towards support, which is at 124.40, but the momentum has turned down according to the daily MACD and the RSI looking very corrective at the very least as well. So uh, looking for this market, remember it's a little bit better position on the RRG chart than the Euro, which has got a very determined heading in the southwesterly direction, looking like it is going to turn down and, and uh, move to uh, into the lagging quadrant. That looks extremely vulnerable. This not quite yet. We've still got the rising lows pattern. We're coming down to substantial support. I would be interested to see what happens here at the 124.50 
level if it can find support here would be a logical place for it to find support and then take another attack on that June high however if it fails here and particularly if it fails these lows here at 123.65 then it's it's finished on the upside for now and it's it's headed substantially lower but at the moment in my view this one is still corrective I'll leave it there for this week. Thank you very much indeed. I hope you the benefit from this session. It will be Julius that will be with you next week at the same time in the same place. So goodbye from Julius and I at RRG Research and may the trend be with you.